most of these pots are made with scraps of clay. Like trimmings, like you can really see the trimmings here easily. You know, like I trip this is trimmings from porcelain. And we're like we're like something like this. Well that's porcelain also. This is this is um Coleman porcelain donated by Curtis. Curtis. <laughs> and, and this is uh, black iron. I mean black iron. This is um, black, mountain. black mountain. No, no, no. Yes, dark brown clay mm -hmm. with Dave's porcelain. Mm -hmm. And I did um, uh, iron oxide in the cracks and rubbed it off. Oh. And it's whiteer yellow. And it did some really beautiful things. Mm -hmm. But the, I, I just a quick how I discovered this um, as a production pottery. We, I didn't save, I didn't recycle scraps, it was just too time consuming. So I would, when I was trimming, I would just, um, I would throw like a lot of stuff at once. And when I trimmed it, I would take my scraps and I just threw them in the trash. And there was a, 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 a bowl that had been bisque, but it was cracked. So it was in the trash and I threw, I was throwing, you know, trimmings in it. And for some, some reason, I moved the bowl and the piece had dried, the piece had dried and there was all this wonderful texture mm -hmm. on it. And I went, wow, I could make a mold and, and make that into a bowl. And so I started making those probably in about 1985, mm. something like that. But like, and what I do, the first thing I do is I make it, I make a, I throw a pot, this bisque, but instead of making the inside smooth, I, I you can see there, there's a foot already, I put inside of it. Mm -hmm. This one, I cheated. I bought a terracotta planter at, um, at Home Depot during the lockdown, and it was planted up, and then plants died, and I went, oh, that's neat. And the reason, it works really good, and the bisque pots work really good for um, for this. Is that when you when I I put the, the scraps in, and I start to um, and I press them and stuff, and then um, uh, my last step after I get it all smooth as much as I can with my hands, I put it on the wheel, and I turn turn it. I did this one this afternoon, and I'm. I, I did it purposely so that by the end of the class, I'll turn it over and you'll be able to see, you know, all the texture on the outside. Because people always go, they go, well, well, how do you get that texture on the outside? And I'm sitting there, I'm showing them <laughs> that they, it just doesn't compute. <laughs> and they usually not around for when I turn the, the pot over mm -hmm. and pull the bowl out. Right. But the wonderful thing is that the bisque pot sucks the moisture out and it's just going to release and it'll be put this one right here now i'll move this and then at the end i will show you what it, how it releases okay the first thing the first thing i do and i forgot to bring my little plug in here so i'm going to make a little plug for and then i have all these bags that have various pieces of clay in different stages mm -hmm. but what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm just putting this in mm -hmm. and that will stop up the hole because mm -hmm. I don't want a hole in, in, a, in, a, in a bowl mm -hmm. and that was made in this mold right here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and that was the white so, porcelain the white is porcelain and you can mix clay mm -hmm. no nope. yeah you can <laughs> <laughs> You can't. Where well, this one is, is all porcelain with stoneware uh, trimmings. And like, I, I rolled out, I rolled these out with my hand, and then I pressed them into the bowl. So you can, there's, it's, it's unlimited what you can do with them. I used to do wheat designs, and I would have, like, with it blown by the mm -hmm. wind, and then I'd do one really narrow one with the, the little wheat um, things. Anyway, 
Now, some of them, like this one, if, if that's trimming, they're, they're quite fat. This one, I, w I, I ran out of trimmings, and so I had my, my clay, mm -hmm. and I just took my, not this tool, but one of the tools, I, I just went like this, a whole bunch, got a whole bunch of them out. Mm. So, and I, actually I did that today, so I would have trimmings for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little bit, a little bit um, thicker. Or like this one you can see it's actually trimmings and I don't have if you've seen I do bowl I do um possible and I have like a wave design mm -hmm. and I take my um mm -hmm. one of these but a narrow one and, and go through it around and around and I use those trimmings for that mm -hmm. and also the trimmings from when I trim the bottom mm -hmm. this one I didn't have to trim the bottom because I already in the mold, I already have it. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. What if you're not a thrower? You don't have to. Then you, you get a mold. You have somebody make a mold for you, or you can go scour, go to um, Home Depot and look for planters that are terracotta because terracotta is porous. And um, I like this one because it has this really nice, elegant foot on it. You know, yeah. it makes it. You cannot do it with those plaster ones. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you have, if there's a plaster one that will work for you, oh. you can do that. Um, but I, you know, like I like, I like making my own mold because then I get the shape I want. And I'm experimenting with made um, one that that's upright, and then another one for the top. And so what I do is I, I'll join them together, but. I'll, and the, the one for the top, I'll, I'll cut like a hole like this, mm -hmm. and then I'll stick my finger in and I'll pull, pull it up and I'll make it into a base. Mm -hmm. And then I'll score them and join them together. And I, and I have all the texture on the outside still. But um, let's see, I'm going to use this one. I'm gonna move this over here just so that there's more row. Oh. I can probably move these also. Okay, I'm, I'm going to make this out of um, Amador and I'll use porcelain scraps also and, and Amador scraps. But what I do is, first step is I need to, to make the bottom. So I'm just going to make a, a ball of clay. And that's going to go in the, I'll flatten it out. That's why I have a rolling pin here. Could have used a little bit more, but that'll be okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'll put this in the bottom. I just lay it in there, and then I'm going to press it down all around it. So, Tim, do you make it thicker for the bottom? Yeah, a little bit. Like a half an inch. Yeah, it can be more. I probably normally would make it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But I didn't I didn't gauge it right. So what I'm gonna do now is since there's it's not covering as much as I wanted it to. I'm gonna put some see how there's mm -hmm. it's not covering the bottom? Mm -hmm. Right. I'll I'll press some of these in. And at the same time I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker.
and he used a special tool for this, your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I kind of. Can you hold it up for us? Tim? Yeah. I oh, kinda, all of us, all of us. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just, me. Just you. <laughs> it, I, I find it interesting. It's like, in a way, these pots represent my life. Mm -hmm because um, it's stuff that most people throw away in my life before, before Christ came into it. I was a drug addict and um, babbling idiot, basically. I had done so many drugs, I couldn't, I lost my mind. I couldn't read anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, I take the scraps of clay that most potters at that time were throwing away and was able to make it into a usable vessel. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what God did with my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm still, still smoothing it out. And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna add little pieces of clay around the edge down here. No particular shape, but I'm just, and that will, that will kind of help. I'm putting them around there, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to smooth all those out. take your scraps of clay and make them into something really nice. True. And I know Ray Yu is always recycling her clay and anyone <laughs> else's that will give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Okay, now it, it looks kind of funky. Mm -hmm. It's just, oh. so now I'm just going to smooth it out with my thumb. Can, can you let a couple of us take pictures of that? Oh, yeah. Now it's not going to stick in there? Uh, yeah, I'll show you how. You're going to get it out? It's actually pretty amazing. I never would have guessed. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> so when you throw the original bowl, do you have a size in mind that you're doing, or are you gonna just? I just want to do a couple uh, different size bowls. And, um, the bowls I'm using for, except for this one, I did my first week back in the ceramics class because I wanted to make these. Because I had friends who had bought them, customers who had bought them in the past that said, we want, we want some of your scrap holes. <laughs> <laughs> but I go, well, I'm not shipping, so you're gonna have to come in here. For this one lady who was a really good customer, I ship her some bowls once a year. She initially wanted 12 of them. <laughs> I, go, I can't, I can't make that. It'll take you forever because they don't always get in the kill because they take a lot of room. Okay, now I just smoothed that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't look real smooth and it's not real smooth yet. Mm -hmm. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take
some of Dave's raisin bread <laughs> from Stater Brothers. And here's scraps. Mm -hmm. And you can try to lay them in some kind of orderly fashion, but I don't. <laughs> I just, unless I'm, you know, have something. See, I just, I put them like this. Uh -huh. And I'll, I'll just build that up. I'll go all the way around. And I'll put a layer of that. And then I'll come in with um, some porcelain scraps after I, for the second layer. So I have a question. So we hand builders have slab left over. Well, I do when I make stuff. So then we could just cut out any shape we want from that slab and apply it. Yeah. Yeah. You could for sure. Yeah. You know, you're not limited to scraps like this. Right. That's like um, some of them I I get real detailed and, and where like this one, not this one. This one, I rolled all these out of porcelain, but then I rolled all these little balls and stuck stuck around the edge, so mm -hmm. you get kind of a design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was interesting, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll probably make another one sometime. So you, this was originally a planter that you bought. Yeah, at Home Depot. Depot. At Home Depot. And I didn't buy it to, I bought it during the lockdown. And when the plant died, I go, oh, that would make a really nice <laughs> scrap bowl. Oh, so you didn't throw those forms. This those one, ones. all the other ones I did. The other ones? Oh, yeah. Mm. So I'm laying them in on top of that first layer, mm -hmm. and then in a little bit I will. Well, even now I will take it off. Can you show me again, please? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pressing them into the the bowl itself. So not real hard yet, but just hard enough. <laughs> yeah, you know, just, just the right, just the right, you know, you know how to do that. <laughs> Sorry. So you're pressing all the scraps into the sides? Yeah. Are you putting clay on top of them to press them in? I'm not, but... Um, or just adding more scraps? I'm a adding more scraps, but then once I get all my scraps and Then in, you do the other Then I'm going to put some clay in where there's like places that... Where there's <clears throat> kind of you. divots. Now I'm going to switch to um, <clears throat> porcelain, big porcelain. Uh, really uh, interesting because that's like, uh, lots of little pieces. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press them around the edges of what I've already done. And maybe even put, and then there's some holes, so I'll put, put those in there. But it's like, I'll show you just a second something to show you. There's a summer class for porcelain next door. You should you can ask them to save the scrap. <laughs> <laughs> well Curtis really is good about giving me scraps. Yeah. Those are very dry scraps too, huh? aren't they? Those look really dry. It's it's still moist. Oh. But what's going to happen, even if it's dry, when I do, when I put up my wheel and throw it, I'm adding moisture to it. So it's going to be. It just gonna, looks crumbly. It is a little crumbly. It, you know, it's crumbly because they're little little pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like you can, I could squish this down and make a ball of clay and yeah. throw it at you real easy. <laughs> And then he would go, wait a minute, that's not so crumbly. <laughs> <laughs>
were heckling for that. No, no, I just said, no, 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 I understand that, but I just think it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Right, and one of what's great on this Saturday is we've done a week straight on the Saturday, and I washed all the so when you bought that boat, you had plans in it? I, I planted it. My wife planted it. <laughs> but it, it just came as a, as a, as a pottery boat. Yeah. They have a, at Home Depot, there's a whole bunch of terracotta bowls, uh, planters. And you just look and see which one would make a good bowl. I did have some that were straight up, and I made into planters at first. They were really thick. But, um, they work fine. I put some really nice scrap bowls, but people don't want to pay the money for a planter that they'll pay for a bowl. So I go, okay, I'm. I'm this supplements our income, otherwise, we're living on Social Security, and that's not living at all. <laughs> we were pretty uh, lame when we moved back here from Romania. We thought, oh, wow, we'll be able to, you know, because we were able to buy our, our house outright. We thought, oh, cool, we just have HOA and groceries and, you know, yeah, right. and medical bills and insurance <laughs> and on and on. Yeah, food. Yeah, and, you know, together we were probably about $3,000. I thought, oh, $3,000, that's... That's good. We'll be able to live on that. <laughs> in Romania, we could live on it really easy. Like yeah, really. Or in 1967 or something. <laughs> yeah. But, so, I started selling my paintings. I was Well, during the lockdown, I painted every day. And I didn't know if people would buy my paintings. And... No, they're beautiful. They are. Somebody, they are. some friends were buying them on on my Facebook, and I thought, okay, it's, they're, you know, it's, they're, they pity us. <laughs> so they're, they're buying some stuff, but I want to see what real people. <laughs> so they had, um, right when the lockdown stopped, they had what was called the uh, Saras Marketplace. And nobody wanted to do it, and I applied, and I got in, and um, it was like, what was it? They allowed 250 people on the grounds at a time, and there were 49 artists exhibiting. And I thought, okay, well, there's, you know, there's going to be some people. It wasn't a lot of people there, but. I sold $1,600 worth of paintings the first day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> people, will, people will buy my paintings? Yeah. I didn't know how to price them or anything, yeah. and, and um, so I got in the next weekend too, and I did even better, and then um, I applied as a guest artist, I got in as a guest artist, they had, they had um, 12 spaces, and 50 people applied, and I got they picked my name first. Wow. So I went, okay, God. <laughs> and then I, last year, because you have to live in Laguna Beach. And I don't, obviously. So last year, I, I applied, and um, they said, sorry, we're not having any guest artists this year. Oh. Okay. So the night before booth pick today, uh, the president of Osiris called me and said, we have one space left and we want to give it to you. So you, just, you just take whatever's left. I go, I'll gladly do it. <laughs> so, so they reviewed my case. And I had some people on the board that were fighting to get my seniority reinstated. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they reviewed my case and the bylaws. And um, halfway through the Osiris, they contacted me and said, you've got your seniority back. Yay. You'll be at the end of the line, but you know, you'll be 
you'll be guaranteed a booth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Great. So anyway, I'm I'm there. I sell I sell pottery there. And I do I do good with pots that I sell. But um, my main income is my paintings. Yeah. I call it Ninety percent of what we make is from the They're really wow. beautiful. They are. They are. Yeah. Just yeah. Totally amazed. Beautiful. You have them displayed anywhere? The paintings? They will be starting to be displayed at the Sawdust Festival <laughs> in less than two weeks. Okay. On the thirtieth. Okay. Good. When, when you said that you were a struggling artist at the beginning, uh, I brought to mind the old joke that what's the difference between a struggling artist and a large pepperoni pizza? A large pepperoni pizza will fill your family of four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to... I'm going to press it a little bit more, and now... Oh, wait a minute, are you going to show us? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it might not look like anything right now. It looks like a good dessert. <laughs> when, when it pops out of the mold... It looks... Mm. Just, yeah, the porcelain and then the Amador. And I'm going to use it. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. <laughs> Trim sometimes. But so now, what I'm going to do now is. I'm going to roll a coil, and the coil is going to go around the rim. And that's what's going to join it all together. I'll clean this up. I don't have it. Because it doesn't work on the canvas, and yeah. it definitely doesn't work on newspaper. I could do it on the floor, but... No. <laughs> Now and then I'll get a, I'll roll a coil that will be long enough to do nice. in one. <laughs> Usually I have to <laughs> join a couple of yeah. This looks like it might, might just make it. How big is your coil? Yeah. Um, when it's finished, mm -hmm. I'll show you. Okay. I'll know when I'm finished. <laughs> Maybe a half inch. Okay. Okay. I'm patting it because it's it's going flat in places, so I just want it to keep kind of as round as I can keep it. Although flat would be okay too, if we're uniformly flat. This is about the thickness. Mm. Right oh, it's about, yeah, that's bigger than a half. Yeah. Okay, it's bigger than a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my pen tool and I'll show you. And this will help hold it all together. You're scoring. Is that what you're. What? Right. So you're scoring all the mm -hmm. different colors? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. It won't go through. I'm not going all the way through. Yeah. Hmm. 
assured it here. Surface. Yeah, so that when I press the clay in, it's gonna, they're gonna uh, join together. I never used to do that, but I have to do that with, for some reason, I get separation sometimes. And mm -hmm. I hate to have separation when you've spent so much time doing something, and then it, it's a second. And you don't have to be real meticulous with this, but just a little bit. Tim, is that because you're mixing different kinds of clay? Yeah, and at their different hardnesses. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can see I've scored it. Mm -hmm. You see right here, there's a big hole here, but I'm going to cover that up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start at one, start here, and I'll go around the edge. And I'll press it so into the clay down below so that it doesn't fall down. But I just go all the way around. Oh. <laughs> that's 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 <laughs> exciting. <laughs> I've done this before. I never get it that good. And what I do is I just scoring each 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 side here, one here and one here. So that when I press it together, it goes together. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm just going to start with my thumb. Mm -hmm. and see how I'm pressing that? I'm just pressing mm -hmm. down with my thumb into right. the clay that's already there. All in one direction. Yeah, right. pretty much. Yeah. But then when I get when I get to smoothing it more, I'm going to go in multiple directions. <coughs> Okay, I pretty much have it all, all, all the way down. But now I'm going to add other clay into it, so it will, so it will um, work better. So I just take chunks. Not yet. I see. I'm, I'm uh -huh. mixing it. I'm, oh. I'm working it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One more. One more. So I'm working it into the clay that's already there. The clay that I scored. And at the at the beginning up here, you put a little bit more because it's going to take more to join them together better. And then there'll be a place, I see a place where there's a hole pretty much, so I put an extra amount of clay in there. You must have strong thumbs. <laughs> I don't think I could do that in one sitting. He has no arthritis <laughs> in his thumbs. At the end of doing this, you'll have strong thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's this is what people always go. Well, how do you get that out? And I made one earlier today, so I can show you how to get it out. Like I can't, I won't be able to get this one out tonight. Uh huh. So okay. I'll come in tomorrow sometime, turn it over. I cover it good enough with plastic. To come in. As it dries, no, it will a little bit. Oh. 
Is that how you do it? Yeah. So they really pop out. My guess. It's slump mode, so you can leave it in five. It's slump mode, so you can. I don't know what slump mode is. It, to do it a slump is still yeah. down. Yeah, slump pump mode. Is over. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then it's a slump mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't. I'm, I don't. That's yeah, okay, I just learned it. <laughs> you wanted to try it out. See, yeah. I, learned, I learned something too tonight. She wants to show us how smart she is. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So due to the shrinkage overnight, we'll be able to get it out then. Yeah, yeah. But if it's, you know, if it's, you put it on the top, then you won't be able to. You can add, actually do coil, shrink. add it's more at a time, but this works good for me. I think a little bit of a time. Pretty fast. I mean, if I tried that, it would take a while. But he should I know. This. For me, it won't be. Yeah, not going to be a one day yeah. thing. No. You, baby. You. No, not really. <laughs> this, the team is really fast. I think oh, yeah. it's fast. Yeah. So you can see, I'm almost, I'm wow. almost oh. got it covered. Uh -huh. Right. And there's area. Yeah. No, not really easy. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sit here? Right. No. You need to practice. If I'm in here and I have a free moment and you have some play, I can I can make a bowl. Oh, that's nice. You can sell the moat. You can start selling moat. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of profit. And these are probably my best selling pots. I bet. Yeah. Mm. They're yeah. beautiful. They are. Yeah. Your, your work is really gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know anyone that make, I've never seen anyone making them. No. Although I, lately I've seen stuff on, on Pinterest that is, is close. Mm. There's going to be more people now. Right. <laughs> you might see a rise in this kind of work. Yeah, you might have competition. Yeah, we're all going to Curtis now. <laughs> it's going to be quite a while before I need competition there. Right. <laughs> well, we could use Beamix scraps. Yeah, you can use any of the clay that we have here. You can use. Yeah. You know? I just want some contrasting colors. I I had been using just Dave's porcelain for my porcelain, and I tried English porcelain, but it just it it, it just popped off. It oh, just it huh. didn't it didn't fit with, with like my chrysanthemum flowers. Uh -huh. um, all of them that I did the petals just mm -hmm. just fell off. Even wow. before, some of them before I even fired them. You wow. know, I just went, that's English porcelain? English yeah, porcelain. yeah. Wow. So I tried to, I tried to, um, Coleman, mm -hmm. from the, some of the scraps that Curtis gave me, mm -hmm. and, um, they work. Oh, yeah. And oh. it's, the petals are so much whiter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reminds me of that I used to use Art Box porcelain years ago, and it was, it was they just had one porcelain in there. I bought all my clay from Hard Rock back then. It was right when they first started their business. Huh. In the first year. Tim? And it's neat. I go, Tim, I go there know. now and, yeah. you know, Doug and Klaus, and Doug's kids, I know all of them and they, they remember me from when they were kids. <laughs> <laughs> Liz and Rick and Tim, do you put more clay at the bottom or just on the side? Um, I I work it down so I have it. It's kind of smooth. Okay. So I did put a little bit more 
I'm, I'm, I'm pressing it down towards the bottom. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the pattern. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Oh, good mm -hmm. right. And now I'm ready for yeah. the next step. But I do that on the wheel. Mm -hmm. Get it in the center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now what I'm doing is I'm just going to attach this down here so it doesn't go flying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that doesn't guarantee that it won't. Do you use one of these? Yeah, if you have a grip, grip and grip, it works really good. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is my sponge is wet. And I just get some water going in here. My hand wet. And I'm not pressing really hard right now, I'm just kind of. I like to use a metal, um, a wooden rib on this part at first, and it just kind of gets gets rid of any of the high spots and pushes the clay into the low spots, and it compresses it all together. So mm. you know, hopefully you're not going to have divots. I see divots already. So you I did, a, did an actual pull starting from the bottom going up to the. Well, I don't. I'm not doing that. I'm. I'm kind of working my way down right now. I mean, the original one. It was almost like. The little... Well, yeah. Originally, you throw it just like a regular pot. Right. And now I'm going. I went down, and now I'm going back up. I need a little bit more water. I know. So you put the water on your sponge, and not. Dribbled it into the. Yeah. And you're just using your hand now? Well, I'm using the sponge, but I'm using, yeah, just my hand in the sponge. Fingertips, right? Yeah. But I'm going to go back down to the bottom with my rib. I'm going to use my metal rib. Can you see? These are my most expensive tools. <laughs> <laughs> because I lose, them. I lose them all the time. So why did you do, use the wooden one first and then the metal? Because the wooden one, I can get... Um, this is more flexible, the wooden one is not, mm -hmm. and the wooden one, it, it'll knock the ridges down quicker. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm kind of shaving it a little bit. Mm -hmm. See, getting it, it's coming off like a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now I'm kind of going like I'm th pretending I'm throwing a pot and I'm just going from the bottom up. Except I don't have to worry about it collapsing <laughs> because I have something there to hold.
There's an area that I don't like. <laughs> Why don't you like it? Because it's thinner and thicker and thinner and thicker and it's a potential crack. Oh. And that's why I'm going to go back over it, back and forth. And that feels much better now. Even at this stage, it may crack? Pardon? Even at this stage, it can not crack? Not at this stage, not, no. in the drying stage. Mm -hmm. or the, the, actually, in the firing stage. Because mm -hmm. I have pots that look fine, and I get them out of the kill, and there's like a little crack in there. Mm -hmm. But there's one, the one I showed you has all the porcelain pieces going up in the little balls on it. Mm -hmm. It's it's a second because it's got a little, it doesn't hurt the strength or anything, but there's a crack in it. And if you were to use it like for, um, it, it will it will leak liquid out of there. It'll be fine for a fruit bowl, you know, mm -hmm. but um, for, for ice cream bowl. <laughs> it has to eat fast. <laughs> and we don't like ice cream headaches, do we? No. <laughs> and I'm not going real fast with the, the wheel. And that's how I throw that way too. I don't throw fast. I see people throw really fast. And it's too, too easy for something to go out of whack when you throw it fast. So Tim, for you to throw, the whole process, you do it slowly, Yeah. the speed. Yeah, I mean, see how I'm throwing, how yeah. it's going now? Mm -hmm. I pretty much, that's about my speed all for my whole pot. Mm -hmm. You know, centering and everything. Okay. I might go a little bit faster, but not a whole lot. And I know I've heard people teaching the hair and they say just put it on full blast mm -hmm. and just go don't do that <laughs> don't do that every little when it's going really fast every little every little wobble throws it further out mm -hmm. okay that's done is Very that kind nice. of the ideal height that you want it above the edge yeah. of the mold uh -huh. You want it above, and sometimes I, I'll actually come over it, mm -hmm. you know, if I have that much clay on, but I don't have enough to do that. But, and when I get up here, I'm using my finger here, but I'm, I'm pushing it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's done. Let me wash my hands, mm -hmm. and then I'll show you what it will look like when you pull it out of the mold. I made this one this afternoon, mm -hmm. and it's well, in a different mold. It's, like it's in. It's not in one It's of not yet. Yeah. It's a, a little bit bigger than that. So what I do is I, I just take this. Oh, right, right. No, just flip it over. Wow. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I'll be able to just go. Oh! <laughs> now, I'll, I'll, I threw it this afternoon, so it's like this one if I were going to be here for another, you know, two or three hours. Two or three hours. I could do that. Mm -hmm. But like this one, I didn't press it enough with the clay in, so I'm going to have to trim it. A little bit mm -hmm. just to get that. See, there's a. I don't know if you can see that. There's like mm -hmm. a dent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just, huh. see, I made the foot rather than just being it smooth. Mm -hmm. I made. I when I threw it, I put the foot on it. Mm -hmm. So I don't. If I would have pressed it in enough, I wouldn't have to do that. Right. So, what's your so will you add clay here? No. Oh. I'm going to just trim it in. I, I will I will smooth it so it's, I'll probably it probably won't be as high. And I will do that.
So Tim, what's your process of drying it? Do you cover it for a while? I do, okay. because if for these, if they dry too quick, there's a tendency to, to crack. Okay. So I, I'll cover it real loose, loose. Okay. I won't tuck it in. I'll, I'll cover it so the top is covered and there'll be a little bit of airflow. And then um, every day or so I'll take and I'll go, you know, get it. A lot of air in, mm -hmm. you know, I'll cover it a little bit looser, mm -hmm. and um, for this to be, for me to totally uncover it, I could probably do it in in, in three days, but I usually I usually let it sit there for about four or five days, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I'll uncover it, and then like these I made probably two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they're they're bone dry and they're ready to go into the mm -hmm. into the um, do you use any kind of outside finish? I what I do is I put I rub iron, iron I paint iron oxide on it and then I sponge it I wipe it all off except for what's in the cracks mm -hmm. and then like with with this one I use a flat copper to do the same thing when once it's bisque you put that on and then I I wax down about a half inch or so, so that when I pour my glaze, I don't, if it dribbles a little bit, I don't have it dribbling all the way down. Mm -hmm. So, but usually, if you, I'll, I'll fill it, I'll get the, a good amount of glaze in it, and I'll just go like this, and until it's all poured out. And usually, I don't get any runs. So, the one you made but, today, yeah. how long did it, did you have it dry for? I, I left the studio at four o'clock. Oh, so it's only like about so it three, take two or three hours. Four or five days. No, that's the no, other no, part. I mean, the other part. No, of what I'm going to do. Oh, to, what to I'm going to do out now the, is to get it out of the mold. Yeah. yeah. I got it out of the mold, but I'm going to cover. I'm going to. I'll trim yeah. it before I leave, real quick. Right. And then um, I'll right. I'll let it let it dry slowly, so yeah. that it's ready to go into the. Yeah. Do you dry it upside down like that? Or no, no. Right I just. Oh. You're going to trim it for us? So you're just trying to dry it five days after. Right. So that's talking about when you take it out of the mold and get it today. So it was only like about three hours. Three or four hours. Yeah. Pop it out. And so, um, like sometimes, like I'll make, make it, and if it's like a really warm day or something, I can. Just stick it out in the sun. Yeah, I can. I can look at the top and I can see where it pulls away from the mold mm -hmm. just a little, yeah. little bit, and it can do that in two hours sometimes. Oh, okay. And so then I turn it over. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that ready to be okay. trimmed now, or do you have to wait? Pardon? Is that ready to be trimmed to now? Yeah, now I can trim it right now. It's it's hard now. Mm. What was the black decoration you used? You said you used iron oxide or oh, um, black, black copper. Black copper. Black copper. Black copper. And we have it in there. And that's oxide. Like oxide. copper oxide. Mm -hmm. So when you said when you were glazing that bowl, that you just you waxed around the edge of the, of the Yeah, it's like with with this one, when it's when it's been this, I'll I'll do my stains on it, wipe it all off, and then I'll paint, I'll turn on my wheel and I'll paint wax. I just spin it and do real careful. Around here. But you don't go over the whole thing. You just no, just maybe down about this far. Oh. Sometimes I'll like with with it like this. I'll just cover oh. all in here, especially if it's with uh, black copper, because if I sometimes when you wax over the black copper, it will um, the wax will pick it up and it will so you'll have streaks of black copper. Mm -hmm. okay. So with when I do black copper oxide, I I will. Um, Wax down as far as the, the, the design, and even cover some of the design with wax. Mm -hmm. Tim, uh, you use iron oxide or flat copper oxide. Is that your preference? Is that your what? personal? Is that your per personal preference? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I in the past uh, on porcelain, I've done cobalt carbonate, uh -huh. um, but it's okay. But the black copper and the iron. Are, I think are much more effective. Okay. 
Hmm. And you get the the the, the black like this one was done with black yeah, copper. This, uh -huh. And you can see how it's it's black. Yeah. And it's then, really, really all the cracks. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. That was really so beautiful. Good. But I didn't really understand what you were saying about the wax and the black copper. Oxygen. Okay. Just for the glaze. Just for the glaze. Okay. Yeah. Right. The interior glaze. Just see. You don't do any waxing on the inside. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like, um, especially with a porcelain, okay, I will wax here, but I'll, I'll, I'll be real careful and I'll just, I'll try not to, you know, Cut smear it. it because uh, okay. the, um, the wax will pick up some out. of the, mm. yeah, it'll pull it out and it, it causes um, smears. So you have to be real careful on that. So like this mm. one, I didn't put on the wheel to do it. Mm. I, I just did it by, you know, by hand. Do you just use your beeswax? Wax resistant. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, go out and try it, and you can do. You can. Do your own twist on it. Like this one is totally different. I well, did it, some kind of design. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd never done that before, but uh, during COVID, I did quite a few uh, planters like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.